widely in the U.S. That that's proof. That's proof that it must be good. But I work on Superfund sites and hazardous chemical sites now. Uh, well, I guess starting in the early '80s, and I know the processes that take place with respect to selecting a remedy for a site, especially on private land. And this is where these SS treatments have been used. And the reason they're used is they're cheap, or cheaper than proper excavation and removal of the sediments and then treating the sediments of soils to truly destroy or immobilize the pools. And so we wind up then that SDPA either, well, I'm not sure what their motivation is. I can't talk to that. But I do know they have not reviewed the literature. If you go into my report, I have uh, quoted extensively from well, readily available publications that says it's not appropriate for high organic waste. And the tarpon sediments are something like 50% total organic carbon. Now, go ahead anytime you want. How do we know that they haven't reviewed the literature? Uh, because there's no citation in the EIS to these issues. Not at all. That's you know, and EIS, I do a lot of work with environmental impact statements or equivalent in the U.S. and have been involved in developing a number of these. If you're going to have a proper EIS that's going to guide regulators, which is the terms that have to be here for this case, you have to talk about the issues and discuss them so that you would know. And if you go to a ASTM publications, as I cite in the report, and you say, well, did they talk about the fact that the US EPA guy who's in charge of evaluation of SS treatment said that there's significant questions about the use of this approach for organic waste? Did they discuss the fact that the, the method they used, this is the Earth Tech uh, contractor for STPA on the solidification studies, did they discuss the fact that they didn't do the studies properly? The significant questions, I would imagine you're going to review those yourself. Um, oh, yeah. But what are the... What are the well, questions? the question is, does it really immobilize materials? Now, again, uh, when you talk about immobilization, the question is, how do you judge when it's immobilized? Now, the only way to do this is to see if the rate of leaching or release from the SS-treated tarpon sediments is sufficient so that in the water that moves through the area, and there will be lots of water in those sediments, even after their barriers and all the rest of that's in, that if the water moves to the, at concentrations of PCBs, for example, above the critical levels, you can get out to the estuary and still continue to cause problems. And that's what I predict. I mean, okay. you know. How long are our PCBs? PCBs tend to be have very limited mobility because they're high, large molecular weight compound. But um, when you get down, see the US EPA's critical level, and they published this two years ago, an updated information on PCBs in water. Right. The critical concentration is 0 0.000064 micrograms per liter. 4064. Concentrations above that in water can bioaccumulate in fish and other organisms to a sufficient extent in the tissue of these edible organisms to cause cancer in people who eat uh, these fish on a routine basis. So that's really the objective you have to look to. Could PCPs from the SS treated tarpon sediments be released at concentrations which could get out to the estuary and bioaccumulate to excessive levels. Continue this problem you've got there now. Because mm -hmm. right now, uh, you've got PCBs in the lobster and other things out there. Clearly, it's decreasing significantly, you know, since they shut down the coking operation mm -hmm. and steel mill. Now, they're predicting that within, well, one, I guess it was one uh, fisheries and oceans uh, person here at the, in the testimony said, uh, a couple of decades should be down to a, a new equilibrium. And the question then is, um, will at that time there still be sufficient release from the sediments that have been treated? There is still a reservoir there. 
Well, that can keep the levels up sufficiently so that you never really clean it up. You never get to a point where you can eat lobster again out of that area. We don't know. What we do know is that STPA has not evaluated the situation properly. And that's the key message out of all this. And, uh, what specific problems are there with, with, with the stabilization of the location that would, that would allow that? that well, the problem is, is that organics, in an organic matrix like the tarpon sediments, which is something like 50% carbon, uh, don't fit into the structure of cement. You know, there's a crystalline structure that most heavy metals will fit into when they get locked into the, to the sediments, okay? And so for most heavy metals, not all, they get locked up pretty good. And they're not very leachable, particularly if you can control the water contact. But that's not true of organics. Organics can, in a, particularly in a tarry kind of situation, remain as a globule. And so you can have slow release, at the, you know, the solubility of water from these so-called cement material, especially when you're dealing with a very porous system. You know, they, they're talking about a, you know, a uh, structure you could dig through with a shovel out there. It's not going to be like a, 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 a true monolith, a, black, uh, you know, a concrete wall, uh, where you'd have limited mobility of water. This, the water's going to pass through there fairly readily. And so you're going to have then the potential for releases of the organics to the water passing through the immobilized sediments, which could then be carried uh, out to the estuary when the barrier systems that they're proposing to develop fail. Mm 